Hi guys, welcome to Primus Learning. Welcome again. Um, today, I want to show you how to migrate resources from uh, on-premises to AWS. I want to show you how to migrate a server with applications installed inside, with things running inside uh, to the AWS platform. This video is on demand. So many people have asked me for this video. And so I'm doing a video to show you how to migrate to migrate your applications or your servers to AWS platform uh, using the cloud and your um, service, which is an AWS uh, company. It's uh, an AWS managed company, uh, cloud and your. And so we'll be using that service to do this migration. I'll do a subsequent video using the AWS um, application migration uh, tool. So this one will be using Cloud Endure to migrate applications to the cloud. We've been hearing of migrations and uh, people moving stuff to AWS. Uh, this video will um, step by step, you know, uh, give you the process to follow. So AWS has the migration hub, which is like uh, a place where everything about migration is, uh, you know, you can go there to uh, view what happens with, when someone is involved in, my, in the migration process. The very first thing that usually takes place is that you go to the environment, you want to migrate, check things around, make sure you understand uh, the workloads that need to be migrated to AWS, make sure you talk with a client, understand what type of a server needs to be migrated, what type of servers, what type of instances, what type of applications are running in this instance, how long does it need to take to do the cut over, how long can the client have downtime so you prepare well ahead of time, how, uh, you know, the, the, the various things that you need to do in terms of access, how you will be able to access the servers that you uh, are to migrate because you need access to them, how you will be able to, um, uh, you know, all of that information gives you the opportunity to, to know exactly what you're designing from the AWS side of things, right? Because you want to do a migration to AWS. So here, if you go to the console here and you go into the migration hub, right? You search for the migration hub, is it? You will see, how to discover an environment. So you go to uh, the discover page here, how to discover servers. So you can import uh, the number of servers where, you know, from, from uh, your location, from the on-premise environment. So you can do this, get the information and uh, upload it here to be able to know exactly what type of servers are to be migrated, what type of applications, so you can create applications with these tools and with these, and then these are the tools that you use to discover an environment. So there's a tool called the import tool. There's a tool called the discovery connector, and there is a tool called the discovery agent. So for instance, you want to migrate uh, an application or a, a server that's running somewhere, you download this agent to that server and then uh, run it to get, you know, exactly what type of server it is, the compute power, the capacity and all of that. And once you do that, you'll be able to assess the workloads, you know, uh, uh, that you, you need, right? You assess the type of things that you need, what CPU you would need, uh, which region this application would be in and so on and so forth. After the assess phase, so that those two phases, the discovery phase where you go on premise to the, the client side and try to discover it, know what type of applications, or you can just run your agents and get that, you know, understand the environment. And then you decide on a strategy, right? A migration strategy. What type of migration do you want to do? Do you want to do a, a, a server migration using Cloud and Geo, using the AWS application, uh, the application migration tool and so on and so forth. Then after that, there is the migrate phase, which is what I'll be showing you. It is an actual process. I'll be walking you through step by step right here. So I mentioned there are tools that you use to do the migrate, mi migration. So if it is a database migration, you would use the database migration service in AWS. You just connect to it and you create the sources where the database is, that's the target source and the 
the source itself or the target location on the source, sorry. So to migrate uh, applications, you use this. You can either use the, the application migration service or the server migration service. These are two different uh, services. So the one we have to use is the cloud and your migration service. That is the service we have to use, guys. And so I just wanted to highlight, you, uh, you know, just to show you exactly uh, how you do a migration from this environment. So to connect to it, you just need to click here. If you have an account already, good to go. If you don't have an account, you simply come here and create an account. Register for a cloud and your migration account. Or if you want to use the AWS application migration service, then you just get started here. So I have my account created, uh, my migration account created. Uh, let me show you my migration account in Cloud and Geo. Where is it? I think it should be somewhere here. Yep. So this is my migration account. It's a private account. You see, it's telling you there's new services AWS is promoting. This is a, an AWS company. You can see. All right. So I have my my things ready to go. Um, and now, this is this is where we'll come in and create a project. Um, the next thing I want to show you is from where I'm migrating. So I've created a, a server. So I'll log into that server. So the server I created in AWS in, in Google, the Google Cloud Platform. So this is the server it's running here. I've downloaded it on my, my I've downloaded the RDP um, here on my machine. I have the username and the password. So everything is set up in Google. So it's just like another place where the instance is existing. So it's just like an on-premise environment. So it's a Windows server that we want to migrate. We have some applications running inside this, this server. So I, I logged into it already just to make sure everything is looking good. So we have this server that's running here. We want to uh, migrate this server to AWS. So you, you see the server name here is, uh, the server name is Primus Learning Source Server. So this is the server we're migrating from to AWS, remember this is somewhere else. AWS doesn't know where it is. It could be on your local environment, your data center or anywhere, right? So that's the server we're migrating. So I've logged into it so you see what's inside. So there are some things that I installed here. I've installed um, Visual Studio Code. So it doesn't come with Visual Studio Code, right? You all know that. So. This is Visual Studio Code that's running in here. There's, uh, I've cloned a repository from GitHub and uh, this, is, this is it right here. This is the repository. The repository is called PowerShell. You can see there's a lot of code inside. So I want to migrate all of these things into uh, AWS. There's my code in here. There are things that are running in this instance, right? There's Chrome that's running in this instance. So I've made some installations, applications are actually running on this instance. Now I want to migrate this instance to AWS and be able to log inside in AWS and do stuff as well and let my application run. That's our agenda for today. It's a long, it's a long agenda. It will take some time, but we'll, mute, we'll be muting and stopping or resuming, pausing and resuming because some processes will be longer than others. So we'll be pausing and resuming to have a, a shorter video. So the steps we are to follow are, you know, I just showed you the first step, which is Windows Server hosted on Google. Uh, so we'll connect to our cloud and geo environment, which I just demoed to you. I just showed you the cloud and geo environment. Then we'll create cloud and geo project. So we'll create a cloud and geo project. After creating the cloud and geo project, we have to make sure that the permissions to use uh, Cloud Endure are granted. So the user, you need to make sure that you have a, you know, you, you, you need to make sure that you, um, you have the AWS CLI installed and that you, you've configured a user that has access. So you can do that, create an IAM user. If you don't know how to create an IAM user, I have another video on my channel here, Primus Learning Channel, YouTube channel where you can see how to create an IAM user and grant uh, that user administrative access. So after you've done that, you use the secret key and the secret access key for that user and uh, configure it to your local machine where you will be running stuff or use 
sorry, you use those keys, right? And you, you need to configure them in uh, your cloud and your environment. I'll show you uh, exactly how to do that in this video. So don't worry about the, about the CLI part. Um, so all you need to do is create an IAM user, have the secret key and, and access key of that user with the right permissions. So you need uh, admin permissions for that purpose. They, they will give you the type of permissions that you need, but yeah, if you can do that upfront, it will be easier for you uh, to be able to do the migration. So after that, um, those are the first steps we'll take. So after that, we'll see the project must have uh, uh, the Cloud and agent permissions. Then we'll have to set up the migration configuration. So this will include details like the instance type, the region, the availability zones and subnets where we want to migrate these resources. And then we'll have to install the cloud and your agent on the machine from where you are migrating. So on that uh, instance that we just log into. And then after that, we'll wait for some time. I'll pause this recording at that time so that um, we can pick it up again when uh, the migration uh, process or when the migration preparation is ready for cut over. Then we'll do a cut, cut over and get into AWS and see uh, exactly uh, what is happening in the process? I will be showing you what you the logs showing you exactly where the the the, the process is at the moment. So for now, uh, let us uh, go to the console. So I want to go to the cloud NGO environment and create a project. So I want to create a cloud NGO project. So go to create right create a new project. Make sure you're logged into your cloud and your environment and then you create a new project and give it a name. So I'm already logged out and we sign in again. I'm signing into my cloud and your environment. All right, I'm logged in here. So let me create a project. So I'll call this one Primus Learning Migration Project. Create project. Yep created the project. Now we need to set up the project. Project not set up. So we need to set up this project. So you see the instructions here. In order to use this project, you first need to set it up. First, you need to provide the Amazon Web Service credentials required to use this migration project. So the credentials you're providing is that for the user I told you to create. I created an IAM user with administrative permissions. You could also grant just the permissions that are needed here. If you wanted to grant just the permissions that are needed here, you click on these. These will take you to the permissions that you, you need to be able to uh, create this project. So you go on AWS, create a policy and uh, attach this policy to the user you would use for this project. But because I already created an IAM user with administrative rights, I don't need these permissions. It has those permissions. The admin rights have those permissions. So all I need now is to, you know, get my credentials. It's asking you why you want um, credentials. So the AWS access key ID. So I need to grab the access key ID of this one of my users here. This is an admin user. It's called Tony. So I'll grab it. Don't need to see that, guys. Don't mind. Grab it and put it here and grab the secret key ID here or the secret access key and put it as well. So you're seeing this just because it is a demo uh, uh, project. I'm just demoing this on YouTube. So after this, I'll delete those users. So don't be, don't be thinking that you will log into my account. No way. Anyway, yeah. So once you do that, just save uh, those credentials. It will permit the Cloud NGO to discover your AWS account, to have access to your AWS account. That's exactly what it's doing. Now it's done that. And you want to select the source of your migration. Where are you migrating from? You could be migrating from other AWS regions to others. But in this case, we are migrating from other infrastructure, from on premise environments. So you have to define your migration source. So you're setting up 
your replication environment. Now, what's the target environment? What's the target region you're migrating to? So we want to migrate to US East One. So Northern Virginia is where we're going to. So you see AWS US East One, I'm not this one, US East One, that's what we want. One Northern Virginia, Northern Virginia, where is Northern Virginia? I'm not seeing. Oh yeah, yeah, this is Northern Virginia. So this is where we're going to. So select Northern Virginia there. And then you want to have your replication server defined. So you see replication servers. So what type of replication servers do you want to choose? So you want to choose a machine type, right? So I want to go with the default one here. The default one is an M. Uh, M5 dot large type of machine or this other one. So you will choose, you will just choose depending on the machine it will discover. So uh, we select that, you can select default or you specify exactly what your, your, your discovery phase found out, right? So I remember I told you those first things that you do that the discovery phases, they are simple phases, but it takes time to do them, discover the right sizes of things that you need and so on. Then you choose the subnet where you want to migrate your application to. So what type of subnet do you want this to be in? You can decide to choose anyone or you leave it default so that it chooses anyone for you. I would use the default one. And then you choose the security group to apply to the replication server. If you created a security group already, you can choose that. So you can choose an existing security group or you choose the default one. In this situation, I want to choose the default security group because I didn't create any security group before. And then if you want to use VPN or direct connect connections using a private IP, you can do that and provide an IP and port. Uh, we want to leave every other thing. You can encrypt your volumes. So the volumes that will be created for this process, you can encrypt them. Or, and uh, also you can give tags. So I want to give a tag as environment. Mm, I'll call it dev. You can add another tag. I'll say, uh, uh, I'll say service. I'll say migration, just something, some tags for your, for your migration. So after defining your tags, uh, I think everything looks good right here. So your replication settings are good and you save your settings. So once you have saved, saved your settings, it tells you, hey, congratulations, your project is set up. The next step is to install the Cloud Endure agent on your source machine. So you want to select show me so that I will show you how to add your Cloud Endure agent on your machine. So this is important guys, very important step. So you need to, first of all, download the installer. So you need to download the agent installer for the operating system you're using. If you're for Linux, you use this to download it and then you install it and then you run this. So if you're on Linux, you use wget to get the installer and install it. And then after that, you run this. But if you are on a Windows, if you're operating from a Windows machine, you go download the installer here. So I'll get the link of the installer. So I'll copy this link and go into my server, the server you want to migrate from or the servers you want to migrate from. You remember this is the server I told you, it's hosted on Google. So I will do a CMD here and uh, see the machine name, the username for the machine is Primus Beku. So what I'll do is I will get this, Install oh, no, so what I want to do is I want to get this installer from a browser. So I installed Chrome here. I'll open up Chrome. Let's open up Chrome and uh, download this installer on this machine. So downloaded the installer. I want to run it. Yes, run this installer. Why are we running this installer? So that we'll be able to you see it's asking for enter your cloud and your installation token. Now let's go back and grab the installation token that um, we were given, right? Uh, so the installation token is this one right here. 
is the installation token. So you grab it and get back into this machine and you provide a token and you hit enter. Connecting to Cloud Endure console. So it is this machine is connecting to the Cloud Endure console uh, and it's asking us for something. Uh, this I have new de this detection enter or press enter to re replicate some of the disk type type the part of the disk separated with a comma. If you don't want any any type defined, you want it to use the default type, you just hit enter. So it's replicating, it will be replicating the disk in the Cloud Endure agent. So it's downloading the Cloud Endure agent, it's finished downloading, it's installing the Cloud Endure agent. So it's in the process of installing the cloud and your agent. So see, we downloaded and then launched the agent. So this, this is the agent that we downloaded and then we were launching it using this token right here. So it's the same thing. You could just copy this, download it and just run this command and we'll get it going. So it successfully installed the agent. Press enter to close. So press enter to close. All right. We've done that. And uh, let's open this up one more time. See, it's initiating data replication. It's discovered that agent, right, guys? It's discovered the agent that we just installed. And now it is initiating data replication initiating data replication from where? From this machine that we, 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 you know, we are migrating from. And now the process has begun initiating. So this process will take a while. So this is the replication settings that we just did. You see everything. And then um, we have our source environment here, you see, this is the server name. It discovered the server name we are migrating. The server is in A in Google, right? And it's discovered it. It's discovered the memory. This is the memory it's discovered. So it needs to initiate these same things in AWS. It will define firewall rules. So those firewall rules have been created. A replication server created, a replication server booted. So if I log into AWS and go to EC2, I will see a replication server created. So let's log into my account and go to EC2. You see, hey guys, you can see this is happening. You are, you are seeing three things running. These other ones, these two things are my, uh, it's all, something else I was running. So Primus Learning Linux Node, uh, this is something else I was running, but the replication server is this one, this third one right here, the Cloud NGO Replication Server Con 17. This is it right here. It discovered a machine and it's, it's um, you know, it's created a, an instance, a replication machine from where it will migrate things, right? You see it's running after, it discovers this and it's preparing the data. So what is happening is it's preparing all the data that's in this machine, making sure it syncs everything, making sure it cover, it copies all the things, the files, the system configurations and everything. Even the application that I have here, this, this repository is a huge repository that I have existing here with a lot of code inside. This Visual Studio code that is installed and everything, it's preparing it and massaging it and syncing it in the AWS environment with a replication server. From this replication server, there, there will be a cut over server where it will then you know, move over things from this machine to the other machine and delete this one. So that process will occur. In the process of doing this, it, it's creating volumes. So if you go to volumes, so you are not doing anything guys, I'm just showing you around 
so you understand what's happening. If you go to volumes, you discover that it's creating some volumes uh, for us so that they will use those volumes to store the data that it's moving over. So you see, it's created this volume, the 50G volume standard, because the server we're migrating from has 50 GB. So it has to create a volume like that in order to be able to uh, do this. And then he created this other volume as the root volume for the migration, while this one is the like an EBS volume, an additional volume so that the data is, um, is not lost. So that's, that's what's happening on the background. So this process will take a while, so the process that's happening here uh, on the migration side, where is my agent? I, so yeah, it's discovered it. So it's discovered 50 gigabytes of uh, data or of an environment, that machine, this EC2 instance or this, this Google instance that's running here is 50 gigabytes. <clears throat> so it's discovered it, it will sync all of these data and replicate all the data over to this environment. So when it reaches 100%, we'll do a cut over, guys. We'll do a cut over. So what I would do is I will stop recording. I'll post this, vi uh, this video for now. And uh, when we are back, right, when it reaches 100, when we want to do the cut over, I will then come back and continue uh, recording. So I'll post the recording for now. Uh, and talk to you guys in a moment. Hey guys, hey guys, we are back. So it's 100% here. I just unmuted and resumed recording. As you can see, it is finalizing initial sync. So it's creating first launchable recovery point. This is what it says. And this is where we were uh, as we went out. And it took about 15 minutes. This was pretty quick. Some get really um, slow with the process. So it took about 15 minutes to get the data from Primus Learning Source Server, which is this server right here. So this is the on-premise server. It's got, gathered all the data, it's synced all the information, it's created uh, the volumes, the various volumes that it needs, the storage, the firewalls, the security groups that it needs and everything. You can see the logs um, right here, right? You can see the logs of the things that have happened already, you know, us logging in and creating stuff and so on and so forth. So it's still loading here. So you see a lot of things that it's done. And now let's see progress. So we don't have a migration progress yet. We have not started the cut over. Once we start the cut over, you just see the, the final machine here, right? So this final uh, initialization sync that it's doing. So it, it will take back to us, it will take us back to this location right here where you see it's replicated 50 gigabytes of data from the old machine, which is Primus Learning Source Server, and it's syncing it up in AWS. We'll come back here to do a cut over. So you see launch target machine. Once you're doing a cut over, you can either cut over in test mode or you do the complete cut over. So test mode says when a target machine is launched in test mode, the source machine is marked as having been tested on this date and date and time. The launch target machine itself is exactly the same for recovery mode and test mode. But on cut over, when a target machine is launched in cut over mode, 
The source machine is marked as having been cut over on this date and time. The launch target machine itself is exactly the same for cut over mode and test mode. So you see those are the actions that we can take right here. So once it finalizes the recovery, we'll be able to uh, do a launch, you know, we'll be able to do a cut over and this is what we'll use. So I want to take us to AWS. Let's go back to AWS. You see, I was terminating my instances for the other thing workloads that I was doing. So you see the replication instance, it is ready to go. So the replication instance is like an instance that stands in the middle. It stands between the source machine, which is the server you want to migrate from and the target machine, which is the one AWS will create for you. So once the migrate, so everything that, you know, the replication took, like the images, the, the data, the storage, the memory, all those things, it's created it in this server right here. So this server is like the middleman that holds that information and it's stored in volumes. So I showed you some volumes here uh, where you, know, you currently have cloud and geo stuff uh, available. So you have cloud and geo based snapshot. It is held here. So this is like a snapshot of that machine. And then these ones, I already mentioned what these ones were doing earlier. And so this is what is happening in the AWS environment. Let's go back to the EC2 dashboard here, where you can still see there's one machine uh, running. And let's go back in here. So it's still finalizing the initial thing. Once it does that, we will be able to do our cut over. So let's give it just a few moments here and we'll begin with our cut over. Let's give it a moment. In the meantime, I hope you are enjoying this. This process, um, it takes some time to get everything set up. It takes some time to, you know, to discover your environment. The, the, the most important things I will tell you in a migration pro project or process is, hey, talk with the stakeholders, know, assess the, 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 the environment, discover the environment well ahead of time, note down things. You know, AWS Migration Hub can help you uh, through that process. I showed you the Migration Hub and the various steps that it provides such that you can use to, you know, to get your process uh, going. Um, go to the environment, assess it, know the type of instances, the type of machines, discover it with AWS so that you can be able to use the exact type of machines in AWS and not use default settings just as we did here, right? We used default settings so that the machine itself would discover things and migrate them over. So this is some of the things we set up, but yeah, in this scenario, AWS discovers it, it sees the memory, it sees the storage, it sees everything, and it does the thing for us. So creating first launchable recovery point, finalizing initial sync. Oh yes, so the initial sync is finalized, as you can see, it says continuous data replication, never tested. That's fine, we don't want to test it. We'll just do the cut over it, you know, because of time. So guys, uh, welcome to the cut over time. So the cut over time will take about 10 minutes to completely cut over and have your things running on the AWS side of things. So uh, if your applications were running, you would have about 10 minutes downtime or five minutes kind of downtime. So let's get over that process. So want to launch a machine through the cut over method. So you ask you, you're about to launch one new machine in AWS US East, Northern Virginia for the one source machine that you have selected. Each source machine for which a target machine is launched will be marked as having a cut over target machine launched on this date. Note, any target machines previously launched for this machine will be deleted. So remember that replication machine and all of those things will be deleted, including any associated cloud resources that were created by cloud and geo. So the volumes that were created earlier and everything will be deleted once this has kicked, uh, once this has completed the process. So let's get onto it. So we did a cut over, target machine is being launched, see job progress. 
So the job progress will be here and will tell you exactly what um, events are happening. So we launched, we started the launch. So the events will be going down and you can see them in these logs here. This is the progress. Once it finishes, you see finished here, the status. So if you go to AWS, you can observe some activities begin to happen. So let's go back to AWS here. Ah, you see that a cloud and your machine converter is pending. So this machine is pending and the machine type is an M4 large machine. So it's beginning to run. This is a, a converter. It would do all of this, convert the data that's found in this machine over to another one. And then it will launch a, a machine here with the same name, just as the one that we had. So guys, this is taking place. This one is using a, an, an M4 large machine. So it discovered a type that I used in Google and that's exactly what it's doing. It's converting all the data from here and over, moving it. And if we go back to our cloud and geo agent, we can see um, the job was started, started machine conversion. So you see, these are the logs. I don't know why it's still, it doesn't give this log, it doesn't make the thing bigger. So let's close. <clears throat> and go back to events logs. So I think you can see them better here. A conversion uh, cutover initiated for machine, for this machine. So you can see the logs better here. The progress is here while the log, the real logs, you can see them right here. So this is the refresh button. We can refresh and see what's happening. So it's in progress. So I will mute myself, stop sharing and pause the recording. So we come back and uh, uh, continue from where it will end. I will not, I will not completely stop the record. Um, so guys, you can see, uh, it took about uh, a few minutes, uh, seven, eight minutes. Uh, so I'm back here and you can see that it started creating the Primus Learning Source Server. So it's terminate, terminating the Cloud and Geo Machine Converter, which it, it you know brought up in order to copy all the data, to replicate all the data. And it's copied that over and it's beginning to initialize uh, our current machine, right? So if we go back to the logs, so this is the, you see the same name as we had in, in our on-premise environment is the same name it picked up. It's picked up all the data, all the processes and every other thing that we wanted to migrate. And you can see, uh, it started creating replica for instance, Primus source server, Primus learning source server. And so this, these are some of the activities that are taking place in the logs here. Um, you can see the main, the main logs are still here. And if we go back to our jobs. So started creating replica for instance, Primus learning source server. So waiting for that machine to be done. So you see migration lifecycle ready for testing. Cut over machine launched. So guys, it took about how many minutes? About nine. So you see it's finished. This is the time it got finished. About nine minutes, not even up to nine minutes for cut over to be done. So it's ready for testing, guys. We need to log into that instance. You need to test to make sure everything is, is correct. You know, we need to make sure everything is as was on this machine right here. So let's go to AWS. I think it should be launched. Refresh. 
you see it's initializing so let's just let it initialize and do everything it has its public ip address here everything as we expected the security group it adopted you know everything launch time this is the launch time here so if you want to connect to this instance simply click on it and go to connect and see the details remember it is a windows machine so rdp into it and this is how you rdp into this one your rdp download the remote desktop for file you download the remote desktop file and uh, let's connect so the username we want to use is the username and password that we had for the former machine that's what we'll use for this machine it's connecting like this because it's still initializing it's it's a lot of processes to to load yeah so we're, we're expecting this because it's the machine is still initializing this it's not started yet so we can be seeing that here and then we, we do ec2 So it's still initializing, it's not yet fully, fully, fully on because of a lot of workloads. We keep trying when it initializes, we'll be able to connect. initializing so let's let's give it time to to wrap up its initialization and then we'll try to log into the instance See, because it's still loading every other thing that it's installed, every application, making sure it's up and running. So we installed Visual Studio Code, we installed, installed um, what else? We installed Git, yeah, we installed Git and cloned a repository, a huge repository in it. So after finishing up with this, so it's copying every other thing from here, from this replication server over to here. Once that is completely done, uh, then this one will terminate and we'll have just one machine running. So you see it's still initializing. That's why we are uh, not logging in yet. So you see that the job pro progress is completed, right? It's finished. So the job of this environment is done, terminated, it's ready for testing. So that's that's what's happening here and you can see the logs here event logs and captured during the process look at over initiated so on and so forth let's go back and refresh one more time Yes, so it's past the checks now. Let us try to connect to this instance. So let's try that. RDP again. Uh, no, I think we did that already. Yes. So it wants to connect as administrator, but I want to see if it will use the credentials that we had. So the credentials, I think I wrote down the Google credentials somewhere. Uh, let me grab them. Yeah, so I wrote them down here. So this is the username. This one. And this is the password.
Let's let us in. We are connected with the same username, the same password that we had in the other machine. We are, <laughs> guys, so everything is set up the same. We are successful in our, in our migration. Our applications are running. Why do I say our applications are running? Because you can already see, you can already see a few things here. You can see Google Chrome installed. When you have a new machine, Google Chrome is not installed on it. When you create a new instance, Google Chrome is not installed. So our application is running. And if you go to documents, our PowerShell guys is good to go. All our files, everything that we copied is running. Everything is as expected. This, if you search for Visual Studio Code, this is Visual Studio Code. It doesn't come with the application. So it's installed with this machine. So if you open up your, you see, you have your files, even still as open as they were, right? As open as they were. So we did it. Our migration is ready to go. You can close. You see, you have two, I have two side, side by side instances running right here. So if I terminate the Google one, the AWS one will continue to exist. So let me terminate this Google machine right here. I want to delete it. So delete. And so we will not have any other machine here, but the AWS one will continue to persist. Why? Because we created a migration uh, instance, migrated our application and it's ready and running. This is it right here. So guys, this was the demo. This is what I wanted to show you. Once you do the cut over, you will test your application, make sure everything is working, make sure it looks good. So we just did that by observing the application that was running in here, the applications via Visual Studio Code. We had um, uh, Google Chrome installed. We had Visual Studio Code and Git installed. I think there was Git. So you can see Git Bash here. Git Bash doesn't come with with an application, with you know, with a machine in the server that's that's uh, you know hosted, so or that's created in AWS or whatever environment. Any Windows application comes empty. So this is this is it, guys. This proves that our uh, migration was successful. Um, our project was successful. You can go on and delete your project, make your cleanup here. So to delete your project on on here. He says, he says, require attention, don't worry about that. So to delete your project, you go onto the project site here, on you know, project actions and delete current project. So we want to delete, our work here is done, clean it up. This is how we met the console, but our EC2 continues to exist guys. Our EC2, this just one EC2 that we have now, the Google one is deleted, but this one continues to exist with our data and every other thing that we wanted. So uh, this was our objective. So we had five or six objectives here. Uh, we, uh, we had our Windows server hosted on Google. So we went there and saw the, the Google server. We connected to Cloud NGO. We created a Cloud NGO project. And then we made sure we had that, those permissions, those IAM permissions. We set up our migration configuration through those replication settings. So we had our instance details, our region, our availability zone, and so on. We installed our Cloud NGO agent on the server that we wanted to migrate to AWS from our on-premise environment. And then we waited for some time and we did a cut over. And then we explained the difference between test mode and cut over mode. That is what we set up to do. Thanks guys. If you love this video, please click uh, the button below and the subscribe to our channel and help us grow. Also guys, uh, share this video to your friends who are in project and trying to do migrations and they may not know exactly what to do. This is a step-by-step -step, uh, thing for them. Hit the subscribe button guys um, and let us, let us uh, have you learn more things in AWS. There are more videos that we'll be producing We'll be bringing you uh, real life projects, right? As they happen out there in the client sites um, using AWS. So um, 
stay tuned, uh, watch out on our channel. Where we are having great, great, great resources for you. Thanks and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. Thank you.